historically and through all of our history and science books, we believe that life was created by a comet or an asteroid hitting the surface of Earth. In the same way, it also wiped out the dinosaurs. On a long enough timeline, the Earth will certainly be impacted by an asteroid at some point in the future. In the recent past, there has been uh, major impacts on the order of a small nuclear weapon being detonated in Siberia. This was the Tunguska event. A 50-meter-wide comet fragment exploded and flattened about 80 million trees. For 1999 RT-36, the target of the OSIRIS-REx mission, we've determined that there's on the order of a one in a thousand chance of this body hitting the Earth sometime in the 22nd century. It's one of the most potentially hazardous asteroids in the solar system. The greatest threat to our existence isn't climate change, but asteroids, which is why the next 72 hours will be very interesting for our planet, because right now, an asteroid bigger than the MCG is heading towards us at 13 metres a second. Are you serious? Are you literally serious? Asteroids! Well, there are people freaking out right now, folks, that September 23rd or 24th, the Earth is potentially going to get hit with a massive catastrophic, apocalyptic, cataclysmic, asteroid deep impact. Now, wait a minute, everybody calm down, calm down. Go ahead and make some more coffee and just relax. We're gonna die. We're all gonna die! <laughs> Why we're hearing this, there was a guy who put out a video a few days ago, uh, the fact that he had a uh, college buddy of his who now works for the foreign ministry office in Kuwait, who is saying that uh, there is significant concerns of asteroid impact. Now, I know this, I reported it earlier, uh, I, I forgot when, a few days ago, that China discovered an asteroid. They call it 2009 ES, that's about a mile wide and it's headed in our direction. They didn't tell us when it was coming, how close to the Earth it would go by, what other debris is flowing along with it, but they do mention it as a concern. Uh, they even call it a killer asteroid. Now, what we've understand is, I went to NASA and checked it out. NASA does uh, recognize this asteroid. They confirm it exists, 2009 ES, but they're very vague in the information. They don't give us any uh, approximate time of arrival or going by the Earth or how close keeping that one kind of quiet. I don't know why. Now, here's what I do know. We have a, uh, according to NASA, uh, the J JPL, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, is seeking a robotic spacecraft development for asteroid redirection mission. Get this. Uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, has issued a request for a proposal seeking a design, development, and build of the robotic spacecraft that will capture a multi-ton asteroid boulder from deep space during the first segment of an agency's asteroid redirection mission. The RFP is open to the four industry partners that previously completed their conceptual designs of the spacecraft. ARM uh, is a two-part mission that will integrate robotic and crewed spacecraft operations, improving the ground of deep space to demonstrate key capabilities needed for the NASA's journey to Mars. So the robotic segment of the mission completed its key decision point B, review in August, which served as an authority of the JPL to proceed with its next procurement phase. There are four vendors that are trying to come up with a spacecraft. They want this robot robotic segment or arm to be able to demonstrate some high, advanced high power, high throughput uh, solar electric propulsion. Now. NASA is admitting, matter of fact, in the year 2021, uh, in the year 2021, they want to launch this space probe. They want to send it up to a major asteroid, pick a boulder up off the asteroid, and then ride alongside the asteroid, hoping that the gravitational pull will be just enough to nudge the asteroid in a little bit redirecting it so that when it goes by the Earth, it will not pose any threat. So obviously NASA knows there are certain asteroids headed in our direction. The Bible tells us we will have two deep impacts. That's not a that's not a, a, a fairy tale. This is a prophecy. It is going to happen. When? I don't know. But I have a feeling that the elitists do know. 
And matter of fact, they're building underground cities for the elitist to survive a catastrophic event. Even Jesus said there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity of the sea and the waves roaring and men's hearts failing for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head for your redemption is drawn now. Well, in Revelation 8, I'm going to come back to you here. There's an Armageddon office, that, and I, and I reported on this a long time ago. Back in January of this year, NASA Armageddon office aims to protect the Earth from the doomsday asteroids. White House has sanctioned this Armageddon office. Its job is to check, to scour space, to go where no man has gone before, and to find the, the doomsday asteroids threatening the Earth. And you can know this. We will get hit. We will get hit twice. In Revelation 8, verse 8, it says, the, the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And a third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. And a third angel sounded, there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter or poisonous from radiation from a deep impact. So there's going to be two of them. One's going to hit sea, one's going to hit land. They are going to happen. Here's the, here's the situation. We don't know the day or the hour when Christ is coming. And we really don't know, at least we don't know, us little people, we don't know when they're going to impact the earth. But we know they're going to. And so does NASA, and so do all of the scientists. And little by little, they're leaking out concerns. And what's causing the heavens to shake? What's, what's bringing this a galactical belt of asteroids and meteorites? Is it Planet X? Is it Nibiru? Is it the dwarf star? Is it planet number nine? Is it planet 7X? Call it whatever you want to. Is, it, is this what's going to bring about the doomsday effect? The world won't come to an end from both of the impacts. But you'll think it has. Are you saved? Trust me, this one. You don't want to be left behind. And we could have some deep impacts. Matter of fact, I believe we will have some deep impacts before Christ returns. This thing is getting close. And as far as this week, September 23rd or 4th, I don't think you have to worry about that. But you better get things right with God. An asteroid or some kind of meteorite has just hit ground right outside the Mark Twain chili cook-off. They should certainly spice things up a bit. Is it coming doomsday? Well, yes, but not now. Um, okay, everybody calm down. September 23rd is here. And uh, it, just like last year, there was a lot of panic and pandemic, you know, a lot of concern about a deep, deep impact happening. There's been prophecies and different things. Here's what I want to tell you. We will get hit at least with two huge asteroids in two deep impacts according to Revelation chapter 8. But well actually we're going to get hit with probably several uh, asteroids and meteorites of different shapes and sizes that are going to cause some apocalyptic concerns without question. Matter of fact, this is why the global elitists are building underground cities. They are trying to prepare themselves for the coming apocalypse. Now. You are going to see some things. Matter of fact, let me just tell you this. Right now, NASA says there are 1,730 potentially hazardous asteroids that they're aware of. And last night, there were 22 fireballs that were seen in the skies. And so we also know that there's an Armageddon office at the White House. And that Russia is working, their scientists is working on a nuclear uh, space technology to try to blast incoming dangerous, dangerous asteroids into space and blow it into millions of pieces. We know that NASA's announced that in the year 2021, they're going to send up a space probe and go find uh, one of the asteroids that they've identified that's still way out there, and they're going to try to grab a boulder off of it and then let that probe ride along beside this asteroid, letting the gravitational pull nudge it off its track. We know that the Chinese have just announced last week that they've identified the asteroid 2009 ES, and they recognize they call it. It's huge. 
and they call it a killer asteroid. So these, and here's what Jesus said about all these events. He was asked the question about the signs of the end times and, and what, what will be the sign of your coming, the end of the world. And what should we look for? And he said, oh, there's going to be false Christ and false prophets shall rise. And, and there's going to be all kinds of wars and rumors of wars. And nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But then in Luke 21, 11, he says this. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right. Fearful sights and great signs will be in the heavens or in space and nothing could be more fearful than an asteroid on its way matter of fact here's what Jesus also said same chapter Luke 21 he tells us uh, in verses 25 he says and there shall be signs in the Sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken all right, so there's a, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. There is inbounding asteroids without question. But here's the good news. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. All right, so the more asteroids that are incoming, the more meteorites that are seen, the more fireballs that are in the sky, even when the deep impacts start happening, look up. The next verse, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So, look, you have nothing to fear if you're right with God, okay? But as far as today, September 23rd, uh, asteroid, it's nowhere on anybody's charts for an impact today of a biblical proportion. Unless they know and they're not telling us. And I think I already suspect that they do know of asteroids and when they're going to hit. And that's why they're working feverishly. China, United States, and Russia working feverishly to figure out how to deal with what they can't deal with. Release the meteor! Release the meteor! Oh! 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 No way! Right in a Kanyikin! There is an asteroid discovered in December 2004 called Apophis. Named for the Egyptian god of death and darkness. It was named only after its trajectory was identified to intersect that of Earth. Had that not been the case, we would not have named it Apophis. We could name it like Tiffany or something, or Bambi. You know, something not threatening. This one was headed towards Earth, Apophis. All right. Once you discover an asteroid, you gotta wait a little while to get enough of a segment of its orbit to calculate what the full orbit will be, to know if it will come in harm's way. So, we did that. We, the community, I wasn't the one, we got peeps who do this, okay? <laughs> so, we get the orbit. Turns out, in the year 2029, the month of April, the 13th of April, a Friday, <laughs> Apophis will come so close to Earth that it will dip below our orbiting communication satellites. And it is the size of the Rose Bowl. It'll be the largest, closest thing we have ever observed to come by Earth. Now, of course, a much bigger asteroid took out the dinosaurs, but we weren't around at the time. So this is in, in the era of observing the cosmos with technology. This will be the closest, biggest thing we'll ever see come by. Now, the orbit we now have for it is uncertain enough because these things are hard to measure and hard to get an exact distance for. The orbit is uncertain enough so we cannot tell you exactly where that trajectory will be. We know it won't hit Earth. We know it'll be closer than the orbiting satellites. There is a range, a 600 mile zone. We call it the keyhole. If the asteroid goes through the middle of that keyhole, it will hit the Earth 13 years later. It will hit the Earth. 500 miles, sorry, 500 kilometers due west of Santa Monica. So it doesn't matter where it goes through that keyhole. Now, that's will... if it goes through the center. Ah. If it goes through other places within that keyhole, then the contact point shifts further into the Pacific or closer towards Lots North America. Yeah. Yes. Okay? But if it goes through the center, it hits the Pacific Ocean, plunges down into the Pacific, 
to a depth of three miles, at which point it explodes, cavitating the Pacific in a hole that's three miles wide, three miles deep. That will send a tsunami wave outward from that location that's 50 feet high, five stories. Oceans don't like having holes in them. So, this three mile high wall does what? You say that so timidly, sir. Uh, <laughs> collapses. It's a three mile high wall of water. Thank you. Falls back into the hole. Sloshing against itself with such ferocity that it rises high into the atmosphere and falls back down to the ocean, cavitating the ocean again. So now you make a cavity a second time. This cycle takes about 50 seconds, you can calculate it, okay? So, here comes the first tsunami, and 50 seconds later comes another tsunami. So there you are on the beaches of Malibu. <laughs> tsunami comes in. Now, unlike the tsunami in Indonesia, which was one wave that went deep into the shore, this first wave needs a supply of water to exist so that the next wave actually sucks back on it to create itself. So, this tsunami will only go in about a quarter of a mile. So it only goes in a quarter mile before it gets sucked back out for the next wave to come. Here's the problem. Whatever was there on the coastline is now brought back out to sea. And the next tsunami brings it back to the shore. All the million dollar homes in Malibu, they get taken out to the sea and then back. But this time they're in a slightly different shape, okay? <laughs> And so what happens is all, all, the, all the artificial stuff, all the houses, the factories, they get churned into this ablative force that sandblasts the entire west coast of North America clean. So have a nice day for that. Nice. <laughs> so, so, oh, but, but this makes cool. So, I'm sorry, I said uh, 13 years after 2020, I, uh, I misspoke. Um, it's April 13th, 2029, and if it threads the keel, it will hit Earth April 13th, 2036. So it's a, it's a um, seven year. You're my lucky meteor. Right on.